bullshit. It's the No Bullshit Marketing Show. I'm Dave Mastovich, CEO and founder of Mass Solutions. Today, I'm going to focus on the art and science of storytelling in medical marketing. I'll start with a little bit of the science and a company named Nielsen, who is the global leader in audience measurement data and analytics. They said that they shape the future of media. My experience with Nielsen goes all the way back to earlier in my career when I worked in radio and TV and had to learn about Nielsen and Arbitron who assessed the ratings from a viewership and listenership standpoint, have continued to work with Nielsen over the years because they have their annual marketing report. And the Nielsen 2022 annual marketing report has some factoids and insights I think you'll like. The first is 85% of purchases involve brands the customer had already tried in the past. 85% of the purchases we make are brands we've already tried in the past. And 92% of consumers said they trust word of mouth or recommendations from friends and family above all other forms of advertising, social media, content. 85% of purchases were something the customer had already tried. 92% of customers said they trust word of mouth or recommendations from friends and family above all other forms of advertising and content. That word trust is important. We gain trust when others relate to us. When we see someone as an expert, that leads to trust. When we know others use trust, also trust that person or company. So you know what makes us relatable? Stories. You know what makes us see someone as an expert? The stories that we've read, heard, or watched about that person. You know what makes us realize when others are giving us that social proof we want, that they like a product, person, or brand? Stories. Stories help us relate to others. Stories help us gain that trust we want in others. Stories help us see others as an expert or to believe in brands. And there's a science to how we create and consume stories. Did you know that we begin to form stories throughout the day, every day, especially around important decisions? And aren't healthcare decisions super important to us? We begin to follow narratives. That's what the cognitive psychologists say. A recent article in Psychology Today talked about how narratives drive our storytelling creation in our mind. Anecdotes and analogies is what I call it. Anecdotes and analogies are what drive the retention of stories, what we create those stories in our mind by remembering anecdotes and analogies that we either formulated ourselves or that were told to us with those stories. And those anecdotes and analogies humanize us when we're making healthcare decisions. They humanize the healthcare decision, which is typically a cold decision that we aren't excited to make. When we're in medical decision-making mode, when we're thinking about healthcare decisions, we're not excited about that. It's not a purchase we enjoy. We don't say, hey, I have a colonoscopy schedule for this week. It just doesn't happen. It is not the type of customer journey that we go through when we're purchasing a car, which might be stressful, but yet we're excited, or when we're purchasing something for our house or articles of clothing. So the healthcare decision-making process is completely different, has that stress to it, has a lack of a human aspect. That's why in medical marketing, those stories are needed to humanize the process to have us feel more comfortable. And that's why anecdotes and analogies are so significant in your medical marketing. It's about reaching, connecting, engaging with patients and families so that you can gain their trust and change behaviors and mindsets so that they see you as an expert and choose you and get the healthcare they need. You wanna to talk to them through anecdotes and analogies about why 
you exist. What's your reason for being? And what's their why, their reason for buying? Why should they choose you as their healthcare practitioner, whether that is physical therapy, wound care, home medical equipment, a physician, a specialist, a surgeon, any of those decisions that you're making. So I'm going to break down two things for you today that you need to be doing with your medical marketing to reach, connect, and engage patients and families so that they gain trust in you and believe in you and begin to feel comfortable with your practice, whether it's a physician practice or a physical therapy practice or a wound care company or a senior living community. When you're doing medical marketing, you need to gather insights on both patients and families. So this is the first thing you've got to do. So how can you gather insights on patients and families? The first thing you need to do, gather those insights. Let me give you a couple of ways to do that. The first is to ask and listen. Ask and listen. Both can be harder than they have to be, but yet seem simple. So ask means that you have a chance from the time a patient begins their patient journey with you. Throughout that journey, you have multiple touch points where you can ask questions and listen. From the time they walk into your room to register, whether that's a waiting room for a physician or the area you, when you come in for your physical therapy or wound care, from that moment, there are people talking to them on your team and you have chances to ask them questions and listen. Now, you're asking them a lot of questions. You're handing them a clipboard to fill things out. But I'm saying you can ask qualitative insight gathering by asking open-ended questions about what's the one thing that they thought of when they came here and chose us. What's the one reason they, they chose us? Things of that nature. But throughout that entire process, you continue to have chances when they go to the exam or when they go to the workout area or when they're choosing whatever decisions they have to choose for the home medical equipment or the home health care nurse visiting them. You have chances to ask them questions and listen and track. Now, it's simple to understand, not as simple to ex execute, but it doesn't have to be so complex and hard that you put it off and don't do it. I'm suggesting that we have to teach every team member how to ask open-ended questions and how to listen. That doesn't have to be extensive training. It just needs to be done with intentionality. If you're intentional about saying, we're going to ask questions and we're going to listen and we're going to track, and it's not going to become a burden because it's helping every person do their job better. It's helping the intake person do their job better. It's helping the caregiver do their job better. It's helping the therapist, the nurse, the physician, the physician extender. So you want to build a list of open-ended questions, teach the team about being intentional about asking questions and about listening because active listening is huge and listening to both words and nonverbals is huge. Again, this is simple and common sense, but it's not executed well by most of us as humans. We all have to work on it every day. We have to work on asking the right questions or asking questions that lead to answers and then listening and just simply tracking what we heard. And the tracking can be as simple as in your notes app on your phone, typing a couple of things up or taking a couple of notes on a piece of tablet paper. Another way to gather insights is by shopping yourself. Yes, shopping yourself so that you can understand the patient journey, the family member's journey. Now you aren't doing the shopping, but you have someone else coming in and going through the experience. You will be amazed at the insights you gather when you do this on an ongoing basis. Now, if you've never done it, you're thinking of all these concerns and worries. And if you've done it a little bit, you're saying, yeah, that was okay. In both of those instances, you need to commit to it and take the time to creatively find a way to do this. There are companies that do it, but you can do it yourself as well. It doesn't 
need to be super quantitative. It can be mostly qualitative. Now, the ideal scenario with insights is to combine qualitative, just a small sample, open questions, et cetera, and quantitative when you actually do a higher number of uh, the, in the research methodology, plus you're using the more systematic questions and answers and tracking. So when you go to do this shopping and understanding the patient journey and the family member's journey, it can be get started by doing two or three or five, half dozen. But once you do it, you're going to see that it's possible to continue this long term. And you learn things like about what they went through to make the appointment. They, you learn what they saw when they came to the facility, when they parked, when they entered, when they walked into the room, what they experienced, what they heard, how they felt. All of these are incredible things to find out on the insight standpoint to help you with the art and science of storytelling in your medical marketing. So remember, I said I'd give you two things. The first is you have to gather insights. There were two ways to do that. One was ask, listen, and track with current patients and families. And two was shopping yourself and having a systematic way of gathering those insights. But the second thing that I'm going to go over today is ways to tell the story that was created by, about, and for your patients and families. It was created by, about, and for your patients and their families. That's the second major thing. Create stories by, about, and for patients and families. How's this happen? Well, one way is testimonials. Testimonials are extremely valuable and powerful. They can be on camera. They can be written. They are a patient telling what they liked about your medical company, your medical offerings, your health care offerings. They can be on video. They can be written. It's simply about getting those patients who are happy and those family members of those patients who are satisfied and believe in you to give you that social proof that you need. And these testimonials can be on your website. They can be included as email follow-ups with patients and families. They can be on in the waiting room. These are all ways to gather and then leverage testimonials. The second is online reviews. We all want that social proof. We go online about everything we buy and we want to see what others said. You want to actively and intentionally talk to patients about giving you those online reviews. And it's not something that you do once. It's not something you do twice. It's not something you do two times out of the year, two months out of the year. This is something that has to be intentional throughout the whole year to talk about testimonials and to talk about online reviews. Both bring you credibility. They bring you social proof. They present you as the expert. And all three of those, credibility, social proof, and being presented as the expert, make you relatable and trustworthy. Remember at the beginning, we trust our friends and our family and our recommendations and word of mouth far more than any type of advertising or any other piece of content. So I'm talking to you about systematically gathering insights so that you can know what your patients and families see, think, and feel. And I gave you two ways to do that. Ask, listen, and track when you're talking to existing patients and families and shop yourself to understand that patient journey. Then once you've gathered those insights, use those along with your patients and families so that your stores are created by, for, and about patients and families. And I gave you two ways to create stories by, for, and about patient families. The first is testimonials, and the second is online reviews. And what I've talked about today is straightforward, but don't confuse simple with less valuable. And don't confuse simple to understand with completely simple to execute. It's not difficult, but there has to be an intentionality about executing all the things I've said today. And that's what I want you to walk away with is be more intentional about understanding how that word of mouth and friends and families recommendations, 92% of us, that's how we make our decisions. 
and that 85% of people tended to purchase something they already bought. So if you want to get new patients, get new customers for your medical offering, you're going to need to make sure that you are trusted. You're going to need to make sure that you've built a story that was created for, by, and about your patients and their families. And the way to do that is to gather insights and then build that story by, for, and about them through testimonials and online reviews. Be intentional about all of this so it's not a one-time thing because it's not simple to execute, nor is it extremely difficult. It takes commitment and intentionality. If you have any questions about leveraging the art and science of storytelling in your medical marketing, email me, dave at masssolutions.biz. Or if you'd like to just email me something you've done based on what I've talked about today in the past that's been successful, email me that also at dave at masssolutions.biz. Thanks for listening to another episode of the No Bullshit Marketing Show recorded here in Mass Solutions Studios in bold, beautiful, downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS.